Shalom. Shalom. And welcome back to our afternoon Torah portion. And today we're studying Bimidbar. What does that mean? In the wilderness. In the wilderness. And guys, we're I've been in the wilderness. I'm I feel like I'm just now coming out of the wilderness. And our video is like going on and off. Seth, did I mess something up? No. Okay. I think it's just the yeah. What's that? What's your phone, <laughs> Okay. Okay, so guys, we are going into numbers, and we're just starting numbers today, and it's going to be so good because I'm going to show you something. I'm going to give you a sneak peek. This is probably backwards. Wait, can you see it? Yeah, you're right. There you go. Is it visible? Go up. Right there. This is part... Do it now? No. Right, push this forward. There you go. There. I, I don't think they can read it though. So, so guys, this is going to be so cool. This, look. Do you see how this is arranged? This is what it looked like if a stranger came over a mountain <coughs> and looked down over the tribe of Israel. This is how they were camped, and these are their banners that were flying. You see the colors? Those are approximate colors. They're not exact because the dry erase colors were very limited. <laughs> An artist, what can I say? But, um, but, but guys, look at this. Look at the precision of Abiyah. Uh, we're fixing to go into actually the Targum and the, the scriptures, and we're going to read about how Yah designed this, and it is just going to blow you away. <clears throat> Our title today is do you think maybe we've thrown the baby out with the bathwater? And you're going to see why I'm asking this question when we get further in our study. But the beauty behind everything that y'all's doing is just incredible. So we're starting numbers. How do y'all know how long numbers? Uh, what period of time it takes care of? About 40 years. Oh. So it starts from the second year all the way to the end. So look at the very first uh, verse, and we are on page 137 in the Scriptures Bible. In very, the very first verse, it says, and, which means it's tying it back into Leviticus, because and is a vav, and it's, it's, it's in addition to what we just got through saying. <clears throat> and Yahweh spoke to Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tent of appointment on the first day of the second new moon in the second year after they had come out of the land of Mitzraim. I want you to look at something. Go to Exodus 40, verse 17, and that is on page 102. And this verse says, And it came to be in the first new moon, or new month, of the second year, on the first day of the new month, of the new moon, that the dwelling place was raised. So we've got Leviticus between Exodus 40 and Bimidbar, or uh, Numbers 1, right? Mm -hmm. So how long did, Ex did uh, Leviticus take? What, what time period did it take up? Mm -hmm. Okay, in 17 it says it came to be in the first new month of the second year, and then in... Uh, numbers, it's in the second, the first day of the second new month in the second year. It's, it's a month. Wow. Leviticus is a month. So we've gone from Exodus, scan through Leviticus, and everything that happened in Leviticus happened in one month period. Wow. And now we're going into Bimidbar, our numbers, and it will last for a full 40 years. It'll be an accounting and actually censuses. We have two censuses that are taken in um, numbers, let's see, I think I've got this back here. Let me make sure. I just want to check something really quick. The um, census from the time that they left Sinai, yeah, there it is. The census that Yah is ordering them to take right now, in comparison to the census they take at the end of the 40 years, so at Mount Sinai, we start with 603,550, which is what we read in the Torah portion. We're going to go over that. At the end of 40 years, do you know how much, how many we have before we go into 
the Jordan, cross the Jordan and into the Promised Land? We have 601,730. We've been in the desert for 40 years. How many people, how many of these 601,730 that are crossing over um, came out of Egypt? Two. 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 That is it. It's is that like, not crazy? It's kind of like the getting into the kingdom. Yes. Guys, the remnant going into the kingdom, what percentage is two of that? Oh, that? Yeah. Figure, figure that out because it's not even 10%, way less than 10%. So two out of 603,000 actually made it into the promised land, and that was Caleb and Joshua, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone else died in the desert. Everyone else was reborn in the desert. And guys, we also had several plagues, right? Just before they took this last census, they had a plague. It may have been taken after that census. It was taken after the census. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was taken before. Okay. So, let's get started. And we are going to be reading from the Targum, which is what Seth is, is going to be reading from today. And the Targum is the one that's done by Zen Garcia. And the name of it is Aramaic and Palestinian Targum. He's a little bit shaky. I'm getting, I, I don't, uh, I'm getting sick of my stomach watching it. But, um... This Targum mm. is probably one of the best ones I've seen. One big issue with this for me is the fact that it is not, it's not numbered, is it? Mm -hmm. uh, there, yeah, you got to do it number yourself. Yeah, there's like, excuse me for getting so close up here. Yeah, there's like, see it just says Bimid Bar and it tells you, it says Bimid Bar and it tells you the Torah Porsche. But, guys, if you don't know where you are in the script, scriptures compared to this, you're having big problems because it's just not very well. It doesn't have chapters. It doesn't have verses. And to, to relate back and forth is very difficult. I wish you yeah, I I think outside could, the box. You really do. Yep. You really do. So I just read through it I read through it with scripture. I get to the end. And then we'll write down the numbers that are in there. <sighs> I, I'm not that capable. I have to just read through it and I can tell immediately what's uh, different yes. from Real what, scripture. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, let's let's just get started. You ready? See. Uh, see. We're not speaking Hebrew. We're speaking Spanish, okay? <laughs> Spanish speaking uh, Hebrew. Habla Espanol, see. Okay. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai in the tent of appointment on the first day to the second new month in the second year after they had come out of the land of Mitzrayim, saying, Take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel by their clans, by their father's houses, according to the number of names, every male head by head, from 20 years old and above, everyone going out to the army in Israel, number them by their divisions, you and Aharon. Now, guys, <clears throat> what are they doing? Taking the census of how many people are in there. But are they counting the children, and are they counting the no, uh, women? They're just counting everybody 20 and above. Which is the age of what? Accountability. Age of accountability. If you're old enough to be accountable for your actions, you're old enough to, to serve in the military. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've kind of established through this an age of accountability. For you guys, you're getting close. Grant, you're what? Six more years. Six more years. So you're 14. Bailey, how old are you? Twelve. Twelve. You're eight more years. You guys have got a huge, you're way ahead of the majority of people in this world, especially at your age, thanks to their mom and their dad who are leading them down this walk. And that kudos to you guys, because y'all have done a great job. Okay, chapter one, verse four, and a man from every tribe should be with you, each one the head of his father's house. And these are the names of the man who stand with you. And he's gonna go through all the names, but I want you to understand, when someone goes to count a shepherd's flock, Shepherd's going to be there, isn't he? Mm -hmm. So the head of each, like Reuben, uh, we, we've got Reuben, Yisachar, Z Zebulun, Simeon, Gad, 
all of the tribes are going to be represented there by one man. Now, what we're going to see, and I'm going to go, we're going to pass by all these names because they are just time consuming. Is there anything in there, though, that no, we need to see? Two. Okay. But in verse 17, and Moshe and Aharon took these men who were called by name, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second new moon, new month. And they declared their ancestry by clans, by their fathers' household, households, according to the number of names, from 20 year, years old and above, each one head by head. As Yahweh commanded Moshe, so he registered them in the wilderness of Sinai. And the children of Reuben, Israel's firstborn, their genealogy by their clans, and I'm going to skip down, I'm not, not going to make you listen to all this, but their total was 46,000. 500 from the children of Shimon or Simeon 59,300 from the children of Gad 45,650 from the children of Yehuda we've got 74,600 from the children of uh, skipped from the children of Yisachar we have 54,400 from the children of Zebulun were 57,400. From the children of Joseph, we have 40,500 in Ephraim. And in Manasseh, we have 32,200. Children of Benjamin, we have 35,400. Children of Dan, we have 62,700. And from the children of Asher, we have 41,000. 500 and we've got one more <laughs> naphtali naphtali had uh 53,400 and i'm now in verse 44 these were registered whom moshe and aharon registered with the leaders of of israel 12 men each one for his father's house and all the, those that were registered of the children of israel by their father's houses from 20 years old and up and above everyone going out to the army in Israel. All of those registered were 603,550. Guys, I want to tell you something that is really, really interesting. In 1948, when, when Israel was declared a nation again and first established, do you know how many Jews came back that year? Between 600,000 and 700,000. Is that not just cool? Wow. So it, it is right in line with the first, the first children that came out of Egypt, the first children that came back into Israel. I like the way John is always balancing the scale. <coughs> What's taken is given. What's given is taken. <coughs> but who was not counted? The Levites. the Levites were not counted, and we're going to see why. So we've got, in 1948, we've got 600 to 700,000 coming back. Within, um, up to this point, there's close to 6 million that are there. In, in the last few years, it may, that number may have changed. But I find that fascinating. At any point, Targumat, Seth, if you find anything, and let me explain. If, if you're new listening to this, this channel and you don't know what a Targum is, the Targum itself is the Aramaic and Palestinian edition of, of really the Old Testament. It was the earliest. It, it was the earliest translation. It was before King James, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we are finding so many treasures. And in fact, this picture that I showed you earlier, many of these treasures came from the Targum. And so we, we have um, really enjoyed studying it. Okay, I'm in verse um, 49. Only the tribe of Levi you do not register nor take a census of them among the children of Israel. Instead, appoint the Levites over the dwelling place of the witness, over all its furnishings, and over all that belongs to, to it. They bear the dwelling place and all its furnishings, and they attend to it and camp around the dwelling place. And when the dwelling place is to go, listen, everything that was done with the tabernacle was done by the Levites. No one else touched it. It was just them. Um, 
who dealt with it. Go to chapter 2. <clears throat> Okay, and Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aharon, saying, The children of Israel are to camp, each one by his own banner, beside the sign, beside the sign of his father's house. Let them camp around the tent of appointment at a distance. And on the east side, towards the sunrise, those of the banner of the camp of Yehuda camp, and they along with Yehuda you have Yisakar and Zebulun. So guys, you're gonna see just the beautiful array that Yah has come up with. On the east side of the tabernacle, you've got Yehuda, Yisachar, and Zebulun. Their symbol is the lion, which is the lion like in, in Yehuda. Their colors are the sardis, the topaz, and the carbuncle. These are actually their colors that are on the ephod, the breastplate. And um, do you have anything to add to any of this? Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, you said it all. Really? I can say it. Read, read through for Yehuda, and then I'll okay. go through the rest of them. Yehuda, by their name, host, spreading over four miles, and his standards shall be four of miles. silk, of three colors, corresponding with those of precious stones, which are in the breastplate, sardius, topaz, and carbuncle. And upon it, sh it shall be expressed and set forth their names of the three tribes, Yehuda, Yisachar, and Zebulun. And in the midst it shall be written, Arise, O Yehuda, and let thine enemies be scattered, and thine adversaries be driven away before thee. And upon it, it shall set forth the figure of a young lion. So guys, each, each area, like the area to the east of the tabernacle, the area to the west of the tabernacle, north and south, all four of these areas were a four by four square, literally. The area in the center where the Levites and the tabernacle resided was a four by four square, four miles by four miles in every direction. So you end up with a, a top, the top look like this, this is the old ancient um, tov. We look like we're doing karate. <laughs> <-ya>. karate. <laughs> I want to do kickboxing. <laughs> well, <no. laughs> get away from me. <laughs> okay, so so you've got the top. Can you imagine? We were talking about this before we started today. The the there was always a fire burning at the tabernacle, right? Always. So right there in the center, you've got this fire just burning constantly. You have the heads of all the families. Okay, now this is one thing that we, we kind of guessed at, but you've got, now this is probably backwards, and I don't know that, Bethany, are you online? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can read these, but each family on, on all the sides, they would actually start Whoops, I know it's backwards. It would actually start like right here. Like Yehuda would be here and he'd go all the way out. Yisachar would start here and go all the way out. And then Zebulon here. So the three tribes would reside just like this. The heads of the tribes would be right up here. And I think you've got that in the Targum where, where Yah says that he wants the heads to be up close around the tabernacle area. It's not backwards, it's good. It, it is good? Wow. I don't know why it's not backwards, but I'm really glad it's not. Mom said, yes, I can read it. Perfect. Okay, so so Susan and the rest of our live streamers, all three tribes on either side, literally the, the front or the heads of those tribes touched the yeah. tabernacle area and went out on all four sides. So you've got, it's almost like a cross if you would would kind of like a, one of the old ancient cross so what's interesting is that y'all tells them do not go to the restroom inside the camp you can't my being dwells here so you have to go outside the camp well you've got 12 by 12 mile camp you got a long way to go you got a long way to go <laughs> but but y'all is so so merciful isn't he 
No, the, the poor guy in the middle seat. Yeah. <laughs> right? Nobody wants to be in the middle seat. You can't get out the right side. You can't get out the left side. You're stuck in the middle. But the poor guys in the middle seat, like you've got Simeon, Manasha, Naphtali, and Yissachar are all stuck in the middle on these streaks. But the good thing is the most that they would have to walk would be about two and a half, three miles, right, to get out of the camp. If you had lepers or anyone who was unclean, they go outside the camp. I know. If you've got to go to the restroom really bad, two to three miles is a long way to yeah. trek. But I mean, they've been they've been trekking for years now, right? So get over it. <laughs> but this is what's cool. Every single, every single head of the threes had a beautiful banner. It, they were made of silk. They had the colors that were on the ephod or the breastplate. And all of them had something that was written on the flag plus a symbol. So on Yehuda's, which was on the east side, and when they left, they always left to the east. On Yehuda's flag, uh, it had the lion. And also written on that flag or banner, it said, Arise, O Yahweh, and let thine enemies be scattered and thine adversaries be driven away from before thee. On Reuben's, Simeon's, and Gad's, it said, Here, Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is one. And their symbol on their flag was, it was actually supposed to be the ox, but because Moshe said, I don't want any remembrance of that golden calf, he, made, he turned it into the stag, which he had to do that with Yah's permission. So you've got the stag on theirs, which represented swiftness mm -hmm. and strength because the stag is going to fight. And then you go to Ephraim, Manasseh, and, and Benjamin. All of these are from who? Rachel. Yep. All of these, these are Rachel's children or grandchildren. You have, now this is interesting. The symbol on their flag was what? It was a man. Yeah, a young a, man. A young man, mm -hmm. not an old man, but a young man. So I guess that's easily defined on a flag. Well, in Genesis 49, if you look at the heads of each one of these, uh -huh. it tells you like the, um, what is it, Reuben mm -hmm. is a ox, right? Mm -hmm. And then Dan's, uh, it says a uh, serpent, by the way. Yes, it does. And, and then, Yehuda is a yep, lion. Yep. What did it say about Ephraim? Well, Ephraim was the second. Or, you know, he got blessed. The youngest son or something like that. Now, that is really, really interesting. So, in 49, it gives you a glimmer into where there, where mm -hmm. God was going yep. in numbers. So, you have the young man that is representing, really, Rachel's children. And then we get up to Dan, Naphtali, and Asher. And I do know that Dan's symbol or his flag was a serpent but this is called the basilisk 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 that's easy for you to say basilisk 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 serpent b-a-s-i-l-i-s-k serpent and it's really more of a dragon it's not really a snake it's really more of a dragon okay on ephraim's flag it says and the cloud of Yahweh, and the cloud of Yahweh was over them in the going forth of the host. And then over Dan's, it said, and in his encampment, he shall say, return, O Yahweh, and dwell in thy glory in the midst of the myriads of Israel. The only other place I've heard myriads used was myriads of angels. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is what's really cool is that on the east side you've got 180,400. That's the total number of men 20 years and older that are camping in this area. On the west side you've got 180,100. So there's only like 300 difference there, which is y'all's perfection is just incredible to me. Same area, a four mile by four mile area. What? You got that look. 
Did I get the number wrong? No, ma'am. Okay, good. Okay, on Ruben, Shimon, and Gad's area, it's 151450 And if you go up to the north area, it's 157600 And all of these that were counted were simply the men 20 years and up. They were all men of accountability. And when you get on the inner square, inside the square, which I'm going to show you this one more time, when you get to the inside square, you've got the tabernacle, and you've got the three sons of Levi. So you have got Kohath, Gershon, and Merari. And of course, Kohath is Moshe and Aharon's father. You've got Kohath on the south side of the tabernacle, Gershon is on the west side, and then Merari is on the north side. And who is on the east side? Thank you, Bailey. Moshe, Ahuron, and Ahuron's sons, only two that are left, and they are Eleazar and Ithacar. Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Ithamar. Mm-hmm. Ithamar. I believe you're, you're exactly right. And so the, the beauty behind this, Valerie and I were talking before we got started, and what's amazing is you've got protection all the way around this tabernacle. You've got protection for the heads of the tribes. You've got protections for the priest, which is Aharon, and his sons. You've got protection for the tabernacle. Everything that is of importance is protected right there in the center by these four, basically, their armies. Armies of 151,000 on one side, 157,000, and 180 on each end. So you've got a lot of protection there. I wouldn't want to come up against that many military men. So um, this is just, it's just amazing and beautiful uh, the way Yah set this up. There's a lot more in in the the Targum. In there? No? I didn't really find that one. Are you sure? (laughs) Let's see. I think I've pretty well explained most of two. Now, we're going to come to three. Three is so important because in three, we're going to see something very fascinating. And I like the way Valerie put it. She said it was the mercy of Yah. The mercy of Yah. Instead of taking the firstborn of all of the children of Israel, what's he going to do? He's going to provide the and ransom. Mm-hmm. He is going to ransom the firstborn of all Israel with the firstborn, actually not even with the firstborn, with all of the men a month old and up in the Levite camp. Is that not amazing? And what is? Here we go again with his perfection and his numbers. So in the 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 Levite camp, let's go ahead and let's read this and then we'll get into the numbers. Okay, in three, first one, and we're on page 140. And these are the generations of Aharon and Moshe when Yahweh spoke with Moshe on Mount Sinai. And these are the names of the sons of Aharon Nadab, the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aharon, the anointed priest, whom he ordained to set to act as priest. And Nadab and Abihu had died before Yahweh when they brought strange fire before Yahweh in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. Sorry, I was looking to see if if I had written notes that were important. And of course they weren't. (laughs) So Eleazar and Ithamar acted as priests in the presence of Aharon, their father. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near and set them before Aharon, the priest, and they shall serve him. And they shall guard his duty and the duty of the congregation before the tent of appointment to do all the service of the the dwelling place. And they shall guard all the furnishings of the tent of appointment and the duty of the children of Israel to do all the service of the dwelling place. And you shall give the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They are to to be the given ones. They're going to be the given ones given to him from among the children of Israel. 
guys, this is so special because Yah is going to take them as a ransom and he's going to turn around and gift them. I mean, this is just beautiful. He goes on in 10, he says, And appoint Aharon and his sons, and they shall guard their priesthood, and the stranger who comes near shall be put to death. And guys, this is very, very important. Um, so the Targum would be slain by fire, or slain by the flame. So in the Targum, it, it literally says they will be slain by the flame. And in 4, he, he actually says this again. It, does it say anything else there? It says uh, when you're going, it says uh, bring the tribe of Levi near and appoint them before Aaron and the priest to minister with them or to do with them service and let them be divided into 20 and 4 parts, parties. That's the only thing different. So 24 parties? No, 20 and 4 parties. Yeah, it's, that's going to be 24. So okay. 20 plus 4. So it's going to be 24. No, that's okay. Oh. Well, I don't know why they say it that way. Yeah, it's like... It's, mm. to, co it's to confuse us. Yeah. Don't be confusing us. We're American. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the stranger is going to be burned up. Mm-hmm. You know, that's interesting because... Um, Made out in a baby war. That's exactly what I was thinking. And they were burned from the inside. And so the souls you know, were burned up. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they were crispy critters. But now in the Targum, when we read further, the, the Targum does explain to us that Nadab and Abihu had been imbibing a bit, yeah. right? They had been so doing a little bit of drinking juice. of alcohol. And so y'all tells us, don't ever drink alcohol before you go into the, the Holy of Holies or the Ten of Appointment. It's, it's like serving two masters. Oh, it would be. Like, you, you know, either serve one or the other. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and really, he was saying, you know, if you have to have, if you want to drink, you can drink it outside. Yep. But you can't go into the, the tent profane. that day. Yep. You will profane it. You'll defile it. Yep. Because you're not going to be behaving with respect as you should be behaving. Right. Because when you get a little bit of alcohol in you, you get a little bold. Get a little loose. Yeah, get a little loose. A little loose, a little loose lift. And, yep. Yeah. Which turns into quite a problem, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you do things like go down a super slide or maybe a baby slide or something like that. <laughs> we just went back a lot of years, didn't we? Just two. <laughs> oh, well, I was trying to help you. <laughs> okay, 12. <laughs> now, look, I myself have taken the Levites from... This is Yah, guys. He said, I myself have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of every firstborn who opens a womb among the children of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. He's saying these, the Levites, all of the Levites are going to be mine. I've taken them because of all the firstborn are mine. On the day that I struck all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, I set apart to myself all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast. They're mine. I am Yahweh. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Register the children of Levi by their father's houses and by their clans. Register every male from a month old to above. So from one new moon... To above, so he's, I mean, instead, he's of, instead of uh, twenty years old and above, why? One month. Because when, when you grow up as a priest, you're going to be, I guess, you're going to be. You're priestly. not going to battle, are you? No, you're not doing any of that. So, so even when was it Samuel that was uh, carried to Eli when he so. was a little bitty baby? Was it Samuel? That his mother yes. prayed and prayed for her, and she yeah. finally yeah. had a baby. And she carried him at what two years old or three years old? And he was a priest. When he was he went on. Yep. He grew up. Yep. Being a priest. Being a priest. And learning. From and priests. learning. Yep. He yep. ended up to be a mighty prophet. Oh yes. So, from a month old and up, they're yaws. And he said, register the children of. Well, I've already said that. So Moshe registered them according to the word of Yahweh, as he had been commanded. And these were the sons of Levi by their names. So we have Gershon, Kehoth, and Morari. And we already went over their positions around the tabernacle. And um, let's see. 
I want to get into the duties. And here we are. Go down to 25. And the duty, you can stop me if you've got anything good. I, I didn't get anything else. Okay. I, I went through it thoroughly yesterday, sorry, the day before. And not a. There's not really not much more. Okay. Unless y'all have something. I'll have to look through mine. I mean, I'm reading it good. Okay, good. I had underlined a few things, but see, I had already gotten everything to NASA. Yeah, I don't think I've got anything else. And the duty of the children of Gershon in the tent of appointment was the dwelling place in the tent with its covering and the covering of the door, uh, the tent of appointment, the screens. Basically, Gershon carried all of the, the big it's, construction items. The stuff for the, the tabernacle. Everything for the tabernacle, the, the walls. Yeah, only the inside group did that. Oh, you know why. Like, well, why? I'm asking. Is it because the other ones weren't holy or you know what I mean? Like only high priests can go in there, correct? Only high priest only the high priest could see and only the priest. So you've got the high priest of Aharon and then you have Eleazar and Ithamar or the two other two priests. There were only three. But like a Yehuda and all them couldn't help them construct it. No. Hmm. No, they couldn't help them destruct or put back together. They were not Levites. Okay. They couldn't have anything to do with that, which is really fascinating. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, sir. Who put together the temple? Then? So it's the Levites. Oh. So you've got the. So like, the whole middle. It was first made. Like when, was it like just Moshe and Aaron that touched it? Like when they first made it? When they first made it, they. I, I'm pretty sure Moshe put it together. Yeah. But he's telling them now. How do you take it apart? Because if you think about it, you had all of the artsmen, the craftsmen, the women were all knitting all of the holy things that were put inside the Holy of Holies. But you've got, so you've got the Gershonites doing all of the exterior around the tabernacle and the tabernacle walls. Kahath, I'm going I'm to go through this and then we're going to get to my Levi. Kahath. Um, he came from the clan of the Am Am Amorites. Uh, okay, their duty was, no, that's supposed to be Kehoth. What was the duty? Yeah, Kehoth. So Kehoth is Aharon and Moshe's father, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So their duty was for the ark, the table, the lampstand, the slaughter place, the utensils, set apart place used in the service and the coverings and all everything, everything inside of it. Everything on the inside went yeah. to Kehoth. So Kehoth already has Moshe and Aharon. I and mean, this is already the priestly group, right? Yep. So these are the ones that are allowed to touch and they're not even allowed to touch the Holy of Holies. So the, the priest, which would be Eleazar, and he's going to be put in charge of, of all of this. He and Ithamar would go in, they would take all the coverings, they would cover everything up. Now, I like the way the Targum put it. The Targum said that the chaos are the no one, no one other than these two yep. priests, Eleazar. Eleazar and Ithamar, Ithamar, they couldn't even go and gaze on them as they were covering these holy items. They couldn't even go in and look on them. Yep. They couldn't watch. So um, they had to be completely absent. Everything had to be covered, wrapped, and prepared. And Eleazar, the son of Aharon the priest, was to be chief over the leaders of the Levites with oversight of those who guard the duty of the set-apart place. And from Morari, so in, for Morari, his was the boards of the dwelling place, the bars, the columns, the sockets, the utensils, and all of its service. The columns of the courtyard. Okay, so I was mistaken. So, um, Marari. Marari had actually all the, it sounds like the big heavy, Good. Like heavy stuff. surrounding it. Yes. And, well, and the walls and so forth, such as that, went to, um, yeah, because uh, Gershon had the uh, curtains and all. Yes. And the, there were a lot of curtains. There was, 
everything. There was a lot of everything. There were 8,000 men in the duty of transporting, setting up, transporting, getting it to where it was going and setting it back up. So they would put it where it was supposed to go and then, of course, you've got Ithamar and Eliezer were the only two that could uncover and set things back up inside the Holy of Holies. Everybody, everybody had their own purpose of doing it. They did. Yeah, their individual purpose where everybody, like people these days, they don't have, they, they struggle with finding a purpose in life or whatnot. Y'all already had theirs yeah. set out. And what, what is really neat is that every time they moved it, don't you know that they got better? The first time you do something, you're really clumsy. You're not real sure what you're doing. You're trying to figure out the right way to do it, the proper way to carry it. And, of course, a lot of these things had literally poles that you carried them with. But they're trying to figure out exactly how to do all this. And the second time, they're better. The third time, they get better. And finally, it just gets to be old hat, doesn't it? Learning from experience. Well, that's right. Learn from doing. Okay, in um, verse 39, it says, All the registered ones of the Levites whom Moshe and Aharon registered at the, the mouth of Yahweh by their clans, all the males from a month old and above were 22,000. And Yahweh said to Moshe, register all the firstborn of the children of Israel from a month old and above and take the number of their names. And you shall take the Levites for me, I'm Yahweh, instead of the firstborn among the children of Israel and the livestock of the Levites instead of the livestock or the firstborn among the livestock of the children of Israel. And Moshe registered all the firstborn among the children of Israel as Yahweh had commanded him. And all the firstborn males, by the number of names, from one month old and above of the, of the registered ones, were 22,273. 73, not 53. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying... Take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel and the livestock of the Levites instead of all, the, all their livestock. And the Levites shall be mine. I am Yahweh. So he's basically taking these 22,000 plus the firstborn of the livestock, right? And for the ransom of the 273 of the firstborn of the children of Israel who are more than the number of the Levites, you shall take five shekels for each one, head by head. Take it by the shekel of the, the set-apart place, the shekel of the twenty garaz, and you shall give the silver, the ransom of those who are in excess among them, to Aharon and his sons. So the tribe of Israel had to pay to Aharon 273 times five shekels, which would be 1,140-something. <laughs> I was like, dang, you're smart. <laughs> I'm, guess, I'm guessing. 273 times 5. 273 times 5. 1,365. 1,365. See, you don't want me doing your math. <laughs> Pretty good. Close. From the first part of the children of Yishol, he took the silver, 1,300. And 65 <laughs> shekels, it tells you. <laughs> Pieces, according to the shekel of the set apart place. Boy. We go to so much trouble, don't we? We got we got a uh, fact checker. That's right, we, we, and we did, and they were right. We've got uh, their math was, was still good. <laughs> so he's not only my target, my, he's my information disinformation dissect sector fact checker. Fact checker. And Moshe gave their ransom of silver to Aharon and to his sons according to the word of Yahweh, as Yahweh had commanded Moshe. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aharon, saying, Take a census of the sons of Cahoth. And um, they took that census, and from from 30 years old to 50. So, guys, from 30 years old to 50 is a, the age of working in the, the service. This is the service of the sons of Cahoth in the tent of appointment, the most set apart matters. And that was from 30 to 50 from the tribe of Cahoth. At the breaking of camp, Aharon and his sons shall come. They shall take down the covering veil, cover the ark of the witness with it, and they shall put on it a covering of fine leather and spread over that in all blue wrapper and shall insert its poles. And the table of showbread, they shall spread a blue wrapper and shall go and it shall put on it the dishes and the ladles and the bowls and the jars for pouring and the showbread 
and they shall spread over them a scarlet wrapper and cover the same with a covering of fine leather and shall insert its poles. And shall take a blue wrapper and cover the lampstand of the light and its lights and its snuffers and its trays and all its oil vessels by which they serve. And they shall put it with the utensils in a covering of fine leather. Are you in the Targum where it says, don't even gaze upon it yet? Boy. And over the golden slaughter place, they shall spread a blue wrapper and cover it with, I wonder what the blue wrapper was. Because blue would have been a hard color to come by. Hmm. Wasn't that ink that was taken from a worm? One of the worms? This is purple. Purple? It says purple there instead of blue? Yeah, it says purple here. Okay. So the Targum says purple. Wait. This is, there's different stuff in here. And maybe it doesn't. <laughs> I'm going to change our Time mind. Will tell. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it says purple in here. Purple. It says twine, a wrapper of twined work. So it's a, it's a woven it's, work that they're putting over all this. And inset its staves. I don't know what that means. That would be the poles. Oh, okay. It says scarlet for uh, the handset. And then it's going to say blue. It says purple in here. I might be wrong. Okay, well, no, I mean, you're no, reading it straight from. So, I, I'm, I, I would think that it is purple, wouldn't you? No? Yes. Yes. We're voting. Why do they get blue? Colors of this one? Never mind. Different, different topic. Hmm? <laughs> I'm thinking of like how their purple would have looked. It wouldn't have been like the bright purple. That's probably, it probably would have been a deep oil. Maybe like this blue or yes, that's yeah, maybe like this because you can see this color under the light. <laughs> yeah, I think it would have been a, I don't think it would have been a bright. Would yeah. you consider this purple or blue? That would be blue. That is blue, but I was. But purple, purple is very close to it. Yeah, it is very close. They call it a purple color. Yeah, the only colors I'm seeing in here is purple, crimson, and scarlet. Mm. So crimson is just a darker color? Yeah, it's like a... Is it red-red? Red, kind of red, burgundy. Crimson well, is... Crimson's kind of purple, isn't it? Or, I think all of them are kind of a purple. You know what I mean? Like a... Never mind. And scarlet would be kind of a dark red, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to I was gonna ask what the difference between those two would be. I wonder if crimson is more red, red. I bet crimson is you know, like more this of a like red. Crimson red, like I know it's not that red, but probably like blood red. Scarlet is probably a little darker. Like yeah. Little dried blood. I bet so. Ooh. Dry blood. Fresh blood, dried dry blood. blood, and then dried blood. Ooh, they blood. think we're back in Leviticus. Oh my God! <laughs> we're still doing it. Okay, verse fifteen. So we've got every. Okay, they've got everything covered with a blue or purple or crimson wrapper. Everything is covered. In verse 15, And when Aharon and his sons have finished covering the set-apart objects and all the furnishings of the set-apart place at the breaking of the camp, then the sons of Cahal shall come to lift them, but let them not touch that which is set apart, lest they die by flaming fire. Die. By flame and fire. Yep. Ooh, this still. These matters are the burden of the sons of Cahal oh. in the tent of appointment and the oversight of Eleazar, son of Aharon the priest. Uh, this is interesting. The oversight of Eleazar, son of Aharon the priest, is the oil for the light and the sweet incense and the daily grain offering and the anointing oil and the oversight mm. of all the dwelling place and all that is in it with the set apart place and its furnishings. He had a load on his shoulders, didn't he? That's a lot of responsibility. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aharon, saying, Do not cut off the tribe of the clans of the Kahathites from among the Levites. So no son of Levites to be cut off from performing any of this work. This is special work. It is for the sons of Kahath. But do this to them, and they shall live and not die. Well, he's saying do not cut off their life by allowing them to touch something 
wrong. He said, do this to them and they shall live and not die when they approach the most set apart objects. Aharon and his sons shall go in and appoint each of them to his service and his burdens. So, I mean, if someone dies, it's going to be Aharon, Eleazar, or Ithamar's fault. They are not, however, to go in to watch while the set-apart objects are being covered, lest they die, die by flaming fire. <laughs> so does it say there that no one can even gaze upon? Yes, yeah, it says, it says uh, but they shall not... They shall not go to gaze when the priests go in to cover the vessels of the sanctuary that they die not they that that they die not by the flaming fire. So if they go in and gaze, they're gonna die, but not by flaming fire? Not by a flaming fire. Well that is interesting. No crispiness. No crispy critters there. Okay, and Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, Take a census also of the sons of Gershon by their fathers. Um by their father's house, by their clans, and res register them from 30 to 50 years old. Guys, 50 years old was like the, the period of time at which they retired. They were still taken care of. And they, they could still do things about the, I mean, they could like make sure that people were clean before they came in the tabernacle. They could guard the tabernacle duty. But they still used them. They just didn't force them to carry things. After 50, we should be treated with respect and honor. Yeah. We Hello. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, um, now that she, he's treating me like I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so register them from thirty to fifty, and they shall bear the curtains of the dwelling place. And he, it just goes on to say what they're going to be bearing and what they're doing. Did you say stop? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Twenty minutes. Okay, but I want to go I have something too. a little bit deeper, okay? My mom has been messaging me this whole time. Wow. Talking about, so I don't know when you want to go down this little trail. If you're on something right now, finish it. But I do want to share something with y'all when we get to it. Okay, go ahead. Are you sure? <laughs> well, what's, what's it regarding? This. Okay, yeah. Um, well, it's just an interesting take on Ezekiel 10. Okay. And I just kind of want your point, but I could see where my mom was, was kind of going with this. Uh, just to skim to real quick. Uh, he's talking about the cherubim that she was going to ask us about earlier. Okay. When you read through this chapter, it literally sounds like this right here. There's only a few little things that are off, but I thought it was cool. Um, he's talking about going among the wheels under the cherub and fill your hands with the coals of fire from among the cherubim mm -hmm. and scatter over the city they went for my eyes. Um, That's his altar. Well, and then you keep going down and it's like, um, where did I see? He's talking about the four wheels. Maybe it's on this side, hang on. Um, where was I? As, as for their parents, all four looked alike, as if a wheel in the middle of the wheel. And when they went, they went on their four sides. They did not turn aside when they went, but they went the direction that the head was facing. They did not turn aside. Their entire bodies and their backs and their hands and their wings and the wheels that the four had were covered with eyes all around. And the wheels were called in my hearing wheel. Each one had four faces. The first was the face of a chair, the second the face of a man, the third the face of the lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. And it was lifted up in the living creature I saw. Um, but I just thought it was interesting the way it was talking about the four mm -hmm. and moving. And it was literally Yahusha above it. It was talking about him... I don't know, you may just have to read it. I was reading it while you were talking, and I could. It talks about the, the color of the barrel stone. Yeah. The, on the top where he reached his hand in to pull the fire out. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought this was just, it was a really interesting. Mom was like, this sounds just like what I was reading in Ezekiel. The four sides, and you're looking at the four sides of this on the inside, the cherubim, which is where his altar would be, mm -hmm. the fire that they pulled out. It's probably very closely related. Yeah. And. We we need to look at that and we'll see how it's totally related. But I want to get over really quick before we run out of time. And Susan, we're going to get into that. But we need to get into the stranger. And I want to show basically 
how far away from what Yah has created that we've, got. that we've gotten. And I want you to see where where this is supposed to be leading us. This camp in the wilderness is where we're fixing to be carried. We're fixing to be carried back into the wilderness. Guys, we're fixing to go. There's going to be a second coming out of Egypt. Right. Y'all know that. This is going to be the final coming out of Egypt. So I want us to look at, at verse 10 of 3. And Susan, we're going to get to that, that other question, but let me hit all this really quick. In verse 10, it says, And appoint Aharon and his sons, and they shall guard their priesthood, and the stranger who comes near shall be put to death. I actually had my verse here, and it is, I think, Ezekiel 20, 19. See, we're going to Ezekiel. Page <laughs> Oh, no. Ezekiel 20, 19 through 25. I'm going I'm to start in 11 on this uh, in Ezekiel. And I, I gave them laws and showed them my right rulings, which if a man does, he shall live by them. That is repeated in Romans 10. Paul, Paul repeats this. If you do the right rulings and the commands, you will live by them. And I also gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between them and me to know that I am Yahweh who sets them apart. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not walk in my laws. They rejected my right rulings, which if a man does, he shall live by them. Repeated. And they greatly profaned my Sabbath. Then I said I would pour out my wrath on them in the wilderness to consume them. But I acted for my name's sake and did not profane it before the nations. Go down to 16. Because they rejected my right rulings and did not walk in my laws, and they profaned my Sabbath, for their heart went after their idols. And go on down to verse 19. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Walk in my laws. Guard my right rulings and do them, and set apart my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between you and me. Now, guys, the verse I was looking for, it is the verse that says that they literally, and I think it's over here in 28, it's where they literally, he literally says that they profaned, they allowed the foreigners into the, they allowed the foreigners into the tabernacle. My apologies. I thought I had it written down. But I got so involved with everything else. Let's see here. Uh -huh. In, uh -huh. What does it say? They did not walk in my laws, my right rulings, and they did not hard to do them, which if a man does, he shall live by them. They profane my Sabbath. So no, no, I read that. This is actually in Ezekiel 44, oh. um, verse 6. And let me start here in 5. And Yahweh said to me, Son of man, set your heart and see with your eyes and hear with your ears all that I say to you concerning all the laws of the house of Israel and all of its tarot. Some of the laws that we're talking about here are the laws of the foreigners don't go into the tabernacle. They don't go in the Holy of Holies. They don't go, they don't touch anything. He says, and you shall set apart your heart to the entrance of the house with all the exits of the set apart place. And you shall say to the rebellious, to the house of Israel, oops, just, it's just called us rebellious. You talking about you? <laughs> yeah. Talking about me too. Thus said the master of Yahweh, O house of Israel, enough of all these abominations of yours, that you brought in sons of a foreigner, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my set-apart place, to profane it, my house. This is Yah. That he's saying, this is my house. And you brought these strangers, these foreigners, into my house. I mean, back here, we see... When he's setting everything up, he says, do not allow a stranger inside. 
He said that you brought your, you brought your near my food, the fat and the blood, and you broke my covenant because of all your abominations. And you did not guard the charge of that which is set apart to me, because you have set others to guard the charge of my set apart place for you. Guys, Jeroboam did this. He, yeah. he, he, he completely changed everything about even then in Shalomo's time. Mm -hmm. Thus said the master of Yahweh, no sign of a foreigner uncircumcised in heart or uncircumcised in flesh comes into my set apart place. Even any son of a foreigner who is among the children of Israel, even if you're among the children of Israel, even if you're living amongst them, you do not come in. Even if you're of the house of Israel, you don't go into the set apart place, guys. He's got a set of rules, and he's not joking. And the Levites who went far from me, when Israel went astray, who, who strayed away from me after their idols, they bear their own crookedness. Now, he's talking about these Levites right now, and he's talking about all of them. He's talking about all three of the Levite clans here. They were attendants in my set-apart place as gatekeepers of the house and attendants of the house, slaying the ascending offering and the slaughtering for the people and standing before them to attend to them. Because they attended to them before their idols and became a stumbling block of crookedness to the house of Israel, therefore I have lifted my hand in an oath against them, declares the master Yahweh, that they shall bear their own crookedness and not come near me, to serve as my priest, nor come near any of that which is set apart to me, nor into my most set apart place, and they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have done. Guys, listen, it's a, the balance of the scale, right and wrong. When you do wrong, He's going to make it right. There is a balancing that comes about. There is going to be a punishment. Listen, we can repent all we want. He will, will get his mercy. But there still has to be a payment for your, your wrongdoing. There has to be a balancing of the scales, always. There's just no exception to the rule. In 14, he said, yet. Now, this is his mercy here. And he's talking specifically about the Aaronic priest, okay? So Ahoran had two children He had that, that lived. He had Eleazar and Ithamar. They both lived. Of those, there was one, Phineas, and of his lineage, there was Zadok. The Zadok priests are the only ones that will be able to approach the altar, the only ones that will be able to approach Yah in the millennial period because they're the only ones that stay true. So in 14, he says, Yet I shall make for them those who guard the duty of the house for all its work and for all that has to be done in it. So he's saying, You're not going to be a priest anymore. Can't come near my holy of holies. Can never, ever do that again. But I'm not going to push you away forever because you're part of the tribe of Aharon. You're part of the Aaronic tribe. So you can still come in. You can still guard the temple. You can still move about the things that need to be moved about. You can take care of it but you're not ever going to come near me. He said, but the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, Zadok, who guarded the duty of my set-apart place when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall draw near to me to serve me and shall stand before me to bring to me the fat and the blood, declares the master. They shall enter my set-apart place and they shall draw near to my table to serve me and they shall guard my charge. This is millennial period, guys. This is not, this was not a couple of thousand, three thousand years ago. This is millennial. This is going to be taking place in the millennial period, okay? He says, and it shall be when they enter the gates of the inner court that they put on their linen gar garments. No wool shall come upon them while they attend within the gates of the inner court. Um, if we keep on going in verse 23, it says, and they are to teach my people the difference between the set apart and the profane and make them know what is clean and unclean. And they are to stand as judges in a dispute and judge it according to my right rulings. And they are to guard my Torah and my laws and my appointed festivals and my set apart 
Sabbath. This is millennial, okay? If we toss away the Old Testament, first of all, you're going to toss away the fact that once the millennial comes about, and we're like, oh, those those are supposed to be priests. They're Aaronic, right? <laughs> yeah. They're supposed to be some of the of y'all's priests, right? No. Sorry about your luck, buddies. Your your boys went astray. They stuck idols in the set apart place. They invited strangers in. They had parties. It's like they they're doing in the White House sometimes. They have parties in there that they should not be having in there. So this is this is millennial. Um, wow. Am I on the right page? I am. Seth. Yes, ma'am. Would you read Luke? Sixteen one through seventeen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're on page one thousand six. <clears throat> you go. And he also said to his top ones, there there was a certain rich man who had a manager and he accused him accused to him as wasting his possessions. So having called him, he said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management, for you are no longer able to be a manager. And the manager said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is taking the managership away from me. I am unable to dig. I am ashamed to beg. I know, I, I know what I shall do, that when I am removed from the managership, they might receive me into their houses. And calling every one of his master's debtors to him, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master and he said a hundred measures of oil and he said to him take your bill and sit it sit down quickly and write 50. then to another he said how much do i owe you do, do you owe and he said a hundred measures of wheat and he said to him take your bill and write 80. and the master praised the unrighteous manager because he had acted shrewdly because the sons of his age are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of life and I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that you, when you fail, that you shall receive you, you, you shall, excuse me, that they shall receive you into everlasting dwellings. And he who is trustworthy is what is least, and what is least is trustworthy also in much. And he who is unrighteous in, in what is least is unrighteous also in much. If therefore you have not been trustworthy in the unrighteous of mammon, who who shall entrust you to who shall entrust to you the truth? And if you have not been trustworthy in another what is another man's, who shall give you what is your own? No servant is able to serve two masters, for either he shall hate one and love the other, or else he shall cling to the one and despise the other. You you are not able to serve Elohim and Mammon. And the Pharisees who loved silver also heard this and were sneering at him. So he said to them, You are to declare yourselves the righteous before, righteous before men. But Elohim knows your hearts, because what is highly thought of among men is an abomination in the sight of Elohim. Mm -hmm. The Torah and the prophets are until Yohanan. Since the reign of Elohim is being announced and everyone is doing violence upon it, and it is easier for the heaven and the earth to pass away for one tittle of the Torah to fall. And everyone putting away his wife and marrying another commits adultery. And everyone marrying her who is put away from her husband commits adultery. But there is a certain rich man who used to dress in purple and fine linen and lived luxurious, luxuriously every day. And when, the, and when there, were, there was a certain beggar named Eleazar being covered with sores who was placed at his gate, and longing to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Indeed, even the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to be that the beggar died and was carried to the, by the messengers to the bosom of Abraham. And the rich man also died and was buried. And while suffering, while suffering tortures in Sheol, having lifted his, up his eyes, he saw Abraham far away and Eleazar in his bosom. And crying out, he said, Father, Abraham, have compassion on me, and send Eleazar to dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering with a flame, or in this flame. 
But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your life you received your good, and likewise Eleazar the evil. But now he is comforted, and you are suffering. And all, excuse me, and besides all this, between us, you are a, you a great chasm has set has been set so that those who wish to pass from here to you are unable, nor do those who from who from there pass to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, and let them let him warn them, warn them, lest they also come to this place of torture. Abraham said to him, They have Moshe and the prophets, and let them hear them. Mm -hmm. And he said, No, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they shall repent. But he said to them, excuse me, he said to him, If they do not hear Moshe and the prophets, neither would they be persuaded, even if one should arise from the dead. Guys, this is where we are today. Mm -hmm. We're doing what we want to do for greedy gain for whatever purposes we want. This is where we are. In Hosea, I'm going to read Hosea, yeah. and we're going to read a few more, because we have rebelled. I, I mean, Yahushua tells them right there. They've got, the, the, they've got Moshe and the prophets to lead them into the kingdom. Yep. If they don't believe them, they're not going to believe him. Nope. Guys, are they going to believe us? <clears throat> they aren't even gonna, they're, they're, not, they're certainly not going to believe us. They're going to believe what they want to believe. They are going to believe what they want to believe. And guys, by throwing out the Old Testament, we have thrown out everything that would lead you back to the path of the righteousness. That is the path. The, the ancient path is from the beginning of Genesis, and it goes all the way through. Listen, all the way through, to Revel through Revelation. Let's go to Hosea 2, and I'm just going to read from 1, a little bit of, down to 22. But guys, we need to understand. There's so much we need to understand. Oi. I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to start in two. I'm going to start in... Oh, shoot. Okay. I'm going to start in two. <laughs> two, two. Uh, strive with your mother. Strive, for she is not my wife, nor am I her husband. Let her put away her horns from her face and her adulteries from between her breasts. Lest I strip her naked and shall set her up on the day as on the day she was born and shall make her like a wilderness and shall set her like a dry land and shall put her in the death of a with thirst and I shall not have compassion on her children for they are the children of whorings for their mother has whored she who conceived them has acted shamelessly for she said I go after my lovers who give me bread and water and wool and linen, my oil and my drink, my, 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 just like in the, the me, 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 my, 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 I want what I want, I want it now, and I'm going to go who gives it to me. Guys, who, who provides everything for us? Yeah. Yah does. Therefore, Yah says, I am hedging up your way with thorns, and I shall wall her in so that she does not find her paths. And she shall pursue her lovers, but not overtake them. And she shall seek them, but not find them. And then she, sh she shall say, let me go and return to my first husband, for then it was better for me than now. And she did not acknowledge that I gave her grain, I gave her new wine and oil, I increased her silver and gold, which, which they prepared for Baal. So he, he increased her silver and her gold. She turned around with her lovers and prepared it and gave it to the idol of Baal. I mean, the gifts from Yah she gave to Baal. I mean, this what a slap in the face. Therefore, I shall turn my back and I shall take my grain in its time and my new wine in its appointed time and I shall take away my wool and my linen covering her nakedness, and now I shall uncover her shame before the eyes of her lovers, and no one shall deliver her from my hand. And I shall cause all of her rejoicing, her festivals, her new moons, her Sabbaths, and even all her appointed times to cease. Guys, he's talking about today. Your festivals, there's going to be no more Christmas, no more Easter. There's going to be no more Sunday worship. No more I mean, Halloween. There's, uh, thank you, John. No Halloween. He says all of her rejoicing in her festivals, her new moon celebrations. Listen, these are not his. These aren't his. These are some that she has made up to replace his. Yep. 
And I'm going to lay, her, lay waste her vines and her fig trees, of which she has said, These are my harlot fees that my lovers have given me, and I shall make them a forest, and the beast of the field shall eat them. How sad. <laughs> Everything she worked for, eaten up by the beast. And I shall punish her for the days of the Baals, to which she burned incense and adorned herself with her rings and jewelry and went after her lovers and forgot me, declares Yahweh. Guys, listen. We're chasing the same idols today. If you're chasing a Sunday lawless Jesus, you're chasing an idol that does not it, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. and, and he's going to give you exactly what you're looking for. A lawless life. And lawless lawlessness leads where? To death. To death where and it doesn't lead into the gate, does it? No. You can't even get through the gate if you're lawless. It's your final death. What does Yahusha say in Matthew? Uh, is it seven? Where he says, Go away from me, you lawless ones. Mm -hmm. I never knew you. Yep. And they're saying, Well, we performed miracles in your name. Well, you don't even know his name. Jesus? No. And it shall be in that day, declares Yahweh, that you call me my husband and no longer call me Baal. Something's happening, right? Wait, did I just miss a whole bunch? Yep, I did. And 14, therefore see, I'm alluring her. I'm alluring her and shall lead her into the wilderness and shall speak to her heart. And I will give her vineyards from there in the valley of Achor as a door of expectation. And there she shall respond as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up from the land of Mitzrayim. Guys, he's talking about Israel. The days of our youth, the days when we came out of Mitzrayim, and it shall be in that day, declares Yahweh, that you call me my husband and no longer call me they all are my owner. I mean, that's basically what it is, my slave master. And I shall remove the names of the Baals from her mouth, and they shall no longer be remembered by their names. Guys, this is going to be millennial. He's going to take us back. He's going to forgive us. And in that day, I shall make a covenant for them with the beast of the field and with the birds of the heavens and with the creeping creatures of the ground, when, of the ground, when, when bow and sword and battle I break from the earth, and I shall make them lie down in safety, and I shall take you as a bride unto me forever, and take you as a bride unto me in righteousness, in righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is doing the commands of Elohim that he's commanded us to do. You got full of food, didn't you? No. Are you falling asleep? No. I'm going to shake you oh, away. Oh, I land. <laughs> And so righteousness is doing everything he told us to do, yep. guarding and doing. Um, and in the right ruling and loving commitment and compassion, and I shall take you as a bride unto me in a trustworthiness, and you shall know Yahweh. And it shall be in that day that I answer, declare Yahweh, that I answer the heavens, and they answer the earth, and the earth answer the grain, and the new wine, and the oil, and they shall answer Yisrael. Guys, this will be the time when, I mean, everything is abundant. We'll have oil and wine and grain, everything that we want. We can eat to our, our pleasure, right? It's a day of plenty. But listen, this is where we are. In Jeremiah 6, 10, look at this. This is where we are today. Not us. We're on a different path, but this is where our friends are. To whom shall I speak and give warning so that they hear? See, their ear is uncircumcised and they are unable to listen. I'm sorry, I'm on page 473. See, the word of Yahweh is a reproach to them. They do not delight in it. What is the word of Yah? It's, it, it's Yahushua. It's and it's everything from the front to the back. It's a reproach to them. Therefore, I am filled with the wrath of Yahweh. I have become weary of containing it. Pour it out on the children outside and on the company of young men together, for even husband and wife shall be taken, the aged and the very old. Doesn't matter their age, doesn't matter who they are, they're all going to be gone. Look, if you find his word and a reproach, uh -uh, I don't even know what to say. 
and their houses shall be turned over to others, fields and wives together. And I shall stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, declares Yahweh. From the least of them, even to the greatest of them, they shall they are all greedy for gain. And from the prophet, even to the priest, all act falsely. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. And they heal the breach of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had done abomination? No. Were they not all ashamed, nor did they know how to blush? Therefore they shall fall among those who fall. They shall stumble at the time I visit them, said Yahweh. And guys, this, this has happened. When Yahushua came, the Jews stumbled over him. He was a rock that they stumbled over. He's still the rock they're stumbling over today. And I'm not talking about the Jews. I'm talking about the Christians. The Torah itself, the word of Yah, is a rock that they are stumbling over. They can't get it. Thus said Yahweh, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, where the good way is and walk in it, and find rest for yourselves. But they said, we do not walk in it. This is rebellion. We won't do it. We won't walk in it. And I raised up watchmen over you and said, listen to a voice of a shofar. But they said, we won't listen. Therefore, hear you nations and know. Doesn't it sound like a bad, spoiled child? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to do it. So, so Seth, Mm -hmm. tell me something. Valerie, you're on Facebook all the time. So you're, you're on there quite a bit. And Bethany. How, what do y'all get when you're talking about the Torah? What What is the response? Because Nothing, most of the time. Nothing? It's done away with. It's done away with. That law, excuse Words me, but for the Jews. that law is done away with. What are you, a Jew? Yeah. I had one guy ask me if I was a cult. Yes, that's me. <laughs> I'm in the cult of Yahusha. <laughs> Darn right. Hi, yeah, yeah. Therefore hear you nations and know a, a congregation what is upon them. Hear, O earth, see, I am bringing evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts. Hmm. Think about that. You're thinking adultery and all that stuff are going to be... It's going to be even more evil. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Because they have not listened to my words, nor my Torah, and they rejected it. This is where we are today, guys. And so what do we say? Oh, we don't need the front of the book. It's not important. What do we need the front for? Toss it away. And then we get to the back of the book and we go, oh, it's yeah, the same thing. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that, that poses a problem. Acts, man, we might can handle it. Romans, yeah. Galatians, mm-hmm. Corinthians, let's just, let's mm-hmm. just take these. Forget about John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Peter, all of, James, all of these other books. Forget about them, and let's just make a doctrine out of what Paul says. That's what we'll do. What do you think? Yes, because it satisfies our own needs. <laughs> well, that's the key word for in that was rejected. And even like with the children of Israel, they were just wanting to go back to Egypt where they could have melons and cucumbers and, and then, fennel. And they just yeah, they don't want to. They don't want to stop doing what they're doing. Because it's what they change want to do. They are literally rejecting it. What's change? Change is uncomfortable for them. I'm not giving, I'm just saying. Change no, is uncomfortable. No, but it is uncomfortable. And they want what they want, and so they don't want. Listen, it's not that it's uncomfortable. They don't want it. Mm-hmm. Because they like what they're doing. They like the sin they're living in. They like the Christmas and the, the Easter Bunny. And they like all of that. They don't want what y'all have. It's from the simplest thing, like to eating pork, to the biggest thing, living in like unmarried or unmarried, having unmarried sex. Yeah, no, <laughs> having sex before marriage, like it's little bitty things all the way to the big things that they're not wanting to. They don't give any uh-uh. of They love their greasy, slimy pork and their fornication of any kind. Bleh. Okay, what is y'all's desire? Is he like, let him burn? No, he He's wants us all, all to come to the kingdom. But he knows that that's not going to happen. Okay, here we are. It's in Ezekiel thirty-three eleven. He says, say to them, as I live, declares the master Yahweh, I have no pleasure 
in the death of the wrong, but that the wrong turn from his, his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? O house of Israel? O house of Israel, out here in the United States, this is Ephraim. Look, Ephraim is to the west of the tabernacle. Here we are, over here in the west. Ephraim, Manasseh, probably Benjamin. We're over here. This is the house of Israel, guys. Does y'all want us to die? No, he wants us to repent. He wants us to turn back to him. The regathering. I've got so many verses, but I don't, I'm trying not to go over an hour and a half, and I'm about to hit an hour and a half. So I'm going to do something that's important. I do want us to, to look at, oh, I do want us to look at a few of them, but I don't want us to bore. Okay, would you look at um, Isaiah 11, 1 through 16? Um, Isaiah 65, 17 through 25. Grant, Micah, 4, 1 through 8. Bethany, Isaiah 2, 2 through 5. Bailey, I don't know when this stops and starts. Isaiah 51, 3, and I've got a dash, and I'm not sure how far it goes, Bailey. Okay. <laughs> Isaiah 8, 2 through 5, right? Isaiah 2, oh, sorry. 2 through 5. Did I give anybody Ezekiel? Did no. I give anybody Ezekiel 39? No. Okay. Phew. I guess I'll just get with it and then... Okay, I'm going to do 39, um, starting at 22, and then next is Bethany. Okay, and the house of Israel shall know that I am Yahweh their Elohim from that day onward. And the nation shall know that the house of Israel went into exile for their crookedness because they trespassed against me so that I hid my face from them and I gave them into the hand of their adversaries and they all fell by the sword. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgression, I have dealt with them and hidden my face from them. Therefore, thus said the Master Yahweh, now I'm going to bring them back. Guys, listen, this is what we're, we're waiting for. If you stay in the back of the book, you're not going to find this. So now I'm going to bring back the captives of Yaakov, and I shall have compassion on the house of Israel, and I shall be zealous for my set-apart name. And they shall, let me see how far I'm going to read, they shall have borne their shame and all their trespass they committed against me when they, when they dwelt safely in their own land with none of them to make, make afraid. When I have brought them back, from the peoples and gathered them out of the lands of their enemies and I shall be set apart in them before the eyes of the nations and they shall know that I am Yahweh their Elohim who sent them into exile among the nations and then gathered them back to their own land and left none of them behind and no longer do I hide my face from them for I shall be have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel declares the master Yahweh millennial Bethany and it shall be in the latter days that the mountain of the house of Judah is established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of Yahuwah, to the house of the Elohim of Jacob, and let him teach us his ways and let us walk in his paths. For out of Zion comes forth the Torah and the word of Yahuwah from Jerusalem. And he shall judge between the nations and shall repro reprove many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither teach battle any more. O house of Jacob, look, come and let us walk in the light of Yahuwah. Isn't it beautiful? Mm -hmm. This is going to be millennial, guys. This is what we get to look forward to. Aren't you glad we're finding it in the Old Testament? Okay, Micah 4. <laughs> One through eight. And then the page six twenty one. Page six twenty one, guys. And in the latter days it shall be that the mountain of the house of Yehovah is established on the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and peoples shall flow to it. And many nations shall come and say, 
Come and let us go up to the mountain of Ehud, to the house of the Elohim of Jacob, and let him teach us his ways, and let us walk in his paths. For out of Zion comes forth the Torah and the word of Yahuwah from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many peoples and reprove strong nations afar off. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither teach battle anymore. But each one shall, shall sit under his vine and under his big tree with no one to make them afraid. For the mouth of, of Yahuwah of hosts has spoken. For all the peoples walk, each one in the name of his mighty one. But we walk in the name of Yahuwah our Elohim forever and ever. In that day, declares Yahuwah, I gather the name and I bring the outcast and those whom I afflicted, I have afflicted. And I shall make the lame a remnant, and the outcast, outcast a strong nation. And Yahuwah shall reign over them in Mount Zion from now on and forever. And you, O tower of the flock, stronghold of the daughter of Zion, it shall come to you, the former rule shall come. The reign of the daughter of Yerusha. Perfect. So guys, there you, you have it again. This is a second witness as to what's going to take place in the millennial. Peace. Guess who's locked up during the millennial? Hasatan. Hasatan is locked up all the way to the end, and we don't have to mess with or worry with him. Isn't that awesome? Okay, Isaiah 11, 1 through 16. Is it you? Yes, sir. Wait. <laughs> Hi. I need a little help from a friend. Hello. <laughs> Isaiah 11, page 420. And a rod shall come forth from the stump of Yeshai, and they sprout from his roots, and shall be fruitful. The spirit of Yahuwah shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of Yahuwah. And and shall make him breathe in the fear of Yahuwah, bless you. And he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But the righteousness he shall judge the poor, and shall decide the straightness for the meek ones of the earth, and shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and slay the wrong with the breath of his lips. And the righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and trustworthiness the girdle of his waist. And a wolf shall sojourn with the lamb, and a leopard lie down with the young goat, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together, and a child leads them. I'm Good. sorry, that's weird. Or not weird. Just that that's going to be the piece. It's going to be the piece of it. I, I'm just like, who doesn't want all that? And a cow and a bear shall feed their young ones, lie down together, and a lion eat straw like an ox. And the nursing child shall play by the cover's hole, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the adder's den. They do no evil nor destroy in all my set-apart mountain, for all the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of Yahuwah as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be the root of Yishai, standing as a banner to the people, and to him the nations shall seek, and his rest shall be esteemed. And it shall be in the day of Yahuwah sets his hand against again a second time to cover the remnant of his people who are left from Ashtashur, Asher, 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 sorry, Asher, you ate too many tacos, uh, from and from Mitzram, <laughs> from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Eliam, from Shinar, from Hamath. And from the islands of the sea, and he shall raise a banner for the nations, and shall gather the outcasts of Israel, and assemble them, the dispersed of Yehuda, from the four corners of the earth. And and the envy of Ephraim shall four turn corners. aside. And yes, four corners. Four corners. That five. Four corners. And the envy of Ephraim shall turn aside, and the adversaries of Yehuda be cut off. And Ephraim shall not envy Yehuda, and Yehuda not trouble Ephraim. But they shall fly down upon the shoulder of the Philistines toward the west, 
towards the west, and uh, together they plunder the people of the east, their hand stretching out forth on Adam and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall be subject to them. And Yahuwah shall put under that band, excuse me, Yahuwah shall put under the band the tongue of the sea of Mitzrim, and he shall wave his hand over the river with the midst of his spirit. And shall strike it seven times, seven, and shall strike it and set the seven streams, and shall cause men to tread in its sandals. And there shall be a highway for the renewal of his people, and those left from Asher, as it was for Israel in the day when he came up from the land of Mitzrim. The end. The end. Six and eleven. Okay, hey, I've got Bandy Girl. Bandy start in 51, 3. And you're going to go down through five. You got it? Cool. For Yahuwah shall comfort, comfort Zion. He shall comfort all her waste places. For he makes her wilderness like Eden and her desert, desert like the garden of Yahuwah. Joy and gladness are found in it. Thanksgiving and the voice of, the, of song. Listen to me, my people, and give ear to me, O my nation, for the Torah does go forth from me, from me. In my right ruling, it I set as a light to peoples. My righteousness is near. My deliverance shall shall go forth. My arm, my arms judge peoples. Coastlines. Wait upon me, and for my arm, they wait expectantly. That is beautiful. And this is all, this is all in the Times talk. Miss Valerie, thank you, baby. You did beautiful. Isaiah 65. For look, I'm creating new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come to heart. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For look, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I shall rejoice in Jerusalem and shall joy and shall joy in my people and let the voice of weeping no more be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. No more is an infant from their going to live but a few days, nor an old man who does not complete his days. For the youth dies 100 years old, but the sinner being 100 years old shall be lightly esteemed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them and plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build, and another inhabit. They shall not plant, and another eat. For the days of my people are going to be as the days of a tree, and my chosen ones outlive the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of Yahuwah, and their offspring with them. And it shall be that before they call, I answer, and while they are still speaking, I hear. Wolf and lamb feed together, and a lion eats straw as an ox, and the dust is like a snake's food. They shall do no evil nor destroy it on my set apart mountains, said Yahuwah. Guys, do y'all see the beauty that is in the Old Testament regarding regarding everything that is in the back? So this is everything that we have to look forward to. You've heard the millennial. Oh, this is not all of it. Guys, this is just a small portion of the millennial lineage or verbiage that is in the, the scriptures. I want to read to you the types of people. I've got three little pieces to read, and then we're, we're done. But I think this is very important because you want to be one of those that gets into the kingdom, and you need to hear everything that is going to take place at the end of time. And if, if I walk out the door and die tomorrow, I need to know all this because guess what? I won't be here in the millennial reign. Okay? You get one chance. You get one chance at this, guys one chance. Now, we may be resurrected to, to teach during the millennial. I don't know. But I want to get this right. I want you to get this right because I don't want, I don't want anyone who has been sitting on a, a pew all their lives and has been misled all their lives about the simplicity, of, and, and it is. Don't think it's not simple, but the simplicity of salvation don't think that you can say a prayer of, I repent, I'm sorry, God, and now let's start fresh, and you can go do whatever you want. That 
is a lie, and that is from the enemy, and we need to get rid of that. And so I want to read these to you. I want, I pray that y'all will open your mind and your eyes to everything that we're talking about today, because your your life, your eternal life depends on this. Okay, I'm in the book of Enoch, and I'm in chapter 50, and I'm going to read the whole chapter because it's like four verses. <laughs> As long. In those days, the Kodashim, or that would be the holy ones, and the chosen shall undergo a change. Th this is talking about the th three different types of people in the end time, okay? So first of all, we're talking about the holy or the Kodashim. They shall undergo a change. The light of the day shall rest upon them, and the splendor and glory of the Kodashim shall be changed. In the day of trouble, evil shall be heaped upon sinners, but the righteous shall triumph in the name of Yahweh Zavaot. What is a sinner? Anyone going against Torah? Anyone doing anything that is not Torah. Anyone not being obedient to Torah. Verse 3. Others shall be made to see that they must repent and forsake the works of their hands, and that glory awaits them not. In the presence of Yahweh Zabaot, yet that by his name they may be saved. You hear many say that by the name of Yahusha I will be saved. True. But you're not going to be in his presence. You can't. Holiness cannot be around unholiness. Do you understand that? Do you get that? Okay, so. The ones that have not been living righteously, they're going to see that they have to repent and forsake the works of their hands, and that glory doesn't wait for them in the presence of Yahweh Zavaot, yet that by his name they may be saved. Yahweh Zavaot will have compassion on them, for great is his mercy, and righteousness is in his judgment, and in the presence of his glory, nor in his judgment shall iniquity stand. He who repents not before him shall what perish henceforth i will not have mercy on them says yahweh zaba oak so those who don't repent are tossed into the fire and what happens they just burn up right done crispy critters they're crispy critters they are done so you've got three people here you've got those who have been walking out righteousness trying to walk and imitate our savior as best as they can that's the first group those who are trying their best, and the light of Yahweh will rest upon them. They will triumph in the name of Yahweh Zavaot. And then you've got, um, it says, in the day of trouble, evil will be heaped upon the sinners. So you've got the sinners that are just going to have more evil heaped upon them. And when those around them who aren't really evil and aren't righteous see what's going on, they're going to realize that they've been misled. And I can just see this. I, I, I think that we're having a great, we're going to have a great falling away. The Bible tells us there will be a great falling away, which means that people are going to fall away from the word of Yah. They, are, they haven't been involved in the word of Yah, but they're going to be falling away from even the, the little bit that they've been taught in the, the pews. And when they do that, guys, we've got people who, who will know sooner or later that they've been lied to. Because there's no pre-trib rapture, right? When the rapture gets started good and heavy, they're going to know they've been lied to. They're going to be like, hey, what'd you tell me? Why are we still here, right? Okay, I'm going to Second Baruch 51, verse 10. That is, and I can't give you a page number because mine is a different book. Well, let me tell you, mine's on page 976. Let's see if mine's the same as yours. For in the heights of that world shall they dwell, and they shall be made like unto to the angels, and be made equal to the stars, and they shall be changed into every form, listen to this, into every form they desire, from beauty into loveliness, and from light into the splendor of glory. This is the code of shame. These are those who have, well, let's go up here to seven. Those who have been saved by their works and to whom the Torah has been now a hope and an understanding and expectation and wisdom, a confidence shall, shall wonders appear in their time. Those who have loved the Torah, 
those who who those who have walked out for it, guys, they shall behold the world which is now invisible to them, and they shall behold the time which is now hidden from them, and time shall no longer age them. Yes, no more aging, Susan. <laughs> no more aging. And that's where it says, for in the heights of that world shall they dwell, and they shall be made like unto the angels, and shall be equal to the stars, and they shall be changed into every form that they desire. I, I think that's just beautiful. Okay, now let's look at Second Ezra 6. Were you on the same page? No, ma'am. Okay. That's all. Oh, yeah, Second Ezra 6, and I don't have the verse. I'm thinking that this is where y'all is saying, look, because Ezra is, look, in the book of 2nd Ezra, Ezra is pleading for all the sinners. He's like, oh, but Yahweh, you're so merciful and you're so, how can any of us, how can any of us escape the coming wrath? And and he's just begging and pleading with Yah. And Yah tells him, hey, Phil, let me see you. I think this is it right here. Let me go to 6, verse 18. And it said, Behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth and will begin to make inquisitions of them what they will be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. And when the, aff the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled and when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished, then will I show these tokens, the sephirim, shall be opened before this expanse, and they shall see all together. That is really talking about um, the books will be open. Do you see? Signs of the end of it, the age. Oh, wait, here it is right here. <laughs> it's 25. Is that what you were looking at? Well, 29. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Whosoever remains from all these that I have told you shall escape and see my Yeshua, our, our salvation, our, our Savior, and the end of your world, and the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth, and the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning, for evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched. As for belief, it shall flourish, Corruption shall be overcome, and the truth, which has been so long without fruit, shall be declared. And this, this is really, all of this is a repeat of Enoch 50, 1 through 3, is what this is saying. So guys, I mean, there's, there's no way to put it any simpler. In the end of days, you better be ready. You better be repented. You better be walking out Torah. You better be doing your best. Listen, can any of us walk it out perfectly? Wake up. <laughs> no. No, we can't. None of us. Well, we can try. We And we do try. Yes. We do try yes, we daily. Do. Grant, how hard is it to walk out Torah? Not too hard. It's not, is it? You So... Bethany and Seth have started their children at a very young age, and I'm, I'm thankful for that because it has been a blessing to sit and watch these kids grow in Torah and the beauty of it. I know Tiffany and Charles said the other day when we were over there, they're like, they're not the same children as they were two years ago. They're completely changed. They're completely different. They have it's a, a beautiful set. compliment to the Torah and to Seth and them. It is. Oh, they're, they were talking about... These kids, yes. no, they're not the same children. Yes. They have been transformed by the word of Yah, literally. Yes. And we've gotten to see this, and it's been beautiful, and I watched you grow. Thank you. I mean, we're, none of us are the same as we were two years ago. We've all changed and grown. Thank you, Mama. I know, but I'm yes. growing look, in size. Look, check this out. You just got taller. Oh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Stay down there. Okay. <laughs> Stay low. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you go? Yes. So, guys, 
our prayer today is that you got something from this, that you're awakened, that you do not throw out the baby with the bathwater. Don't throw the Old Testament out and all the beautiful things that we've got to look forward to. Don't throw out the meat and eat the bones. There you eat go. Eat the meat and throw out the bones. There you go. And, it, and even the bones, you can suck the marrow out. I yeah. mean, I'm like, even those bones, sometimes you they can, can get be, some, They can be used for toothpicks. They can be used for toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves good toothpicks. <laughs> But, but guys, there is so much in the Word, so much in the Word that you're missing by, by not going into the Old Testament. So please, 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 we're asking you to open open up the, the Scriptures and get into the Old Testament. And we, before we even start next week, in fact, I will probably sometime this week, we will talk about the seraphim, <laughs> the four-wheeled seraphim, Susan. Boy. <laughs> We love y'all. We bless you. Seth, you will pray us out. Your son prayed us out before. Sure. Oh, you who I thank you for today. Thank you for this set apart gathering that you bestowed upon us, Father. Thank you for this day of Shabbat that we get to come together and just uh, worship you, be with you, rest in your word, which is Yahusha. Mm -hmm. And just, uh, just thank you for all that you've done for each and every one of our lives. Mm -hmm. Father, forgive us for our sins, but we do fall short, Father, but we try to learn from our mistakes. And help us learn from these mistakes that we make on a daily basis and just not to be uh hurt by them or in our feelings but just to mm -hmm. prosper and grow like a fruit is supposed to do so father we love you we thank you and we pray all these things in your name amen amen like a fruit supposed to do amen, amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay grow. you fruit Vegetail. You lemon tree. I'll be a tomato. <laughs> Vegetail. I'll be your tater. I'll be a mater. Okay, so guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We always have fun, but this is our family. I mean, we are together just about. We're we're together every week, sometimes two or three times a week. And with these two, I'm I'm around them every single day, except for Sunday. And sometimes on Sunday, we're probably going to be getting together as well. Now come on over. Oh yeah. 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 We got them hamburger patties ready, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're, we're I tricked them yesterday. The of the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, listen, life is very short and we don't have a lot of, it's short today because we don't have a whole lot of time left. Listen, there are new laws coming out. Things are being changed every day. And I don't want to get into it on here because I don't want us to get banned. But um if everything is happening that we're hearing is happening, we're, we're getting ready for some bad times. And we, you need to be right with y'all. Would you quit making all that noise, you <laughs> lemon? <laughs> oh, <we're a> tree. <laughs> <laughs> You're dropping your fruit over there. But uh, guys, we've got to be prepared. We have got to be prepared. We love you. We bless you. And live streamers, we do pray for you, and we pray that your ears and your eyes are open to hear and see truth. We love you. Y'all will bless you. And sh Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's late. A late bloomer. Late lemon, lemon. Shalom. The lemon